I'm going to go ahead and share the check-in link. Um, so that check-in link is in the chat. Um, and like I said, I'm going to go ahead and share a PowerPoint with you guys. Um, or a Google Sites actually with you guys. So hopefully everybody can see the... Um, the PowerPoint, um, and then I'm going to go ahead and open up the chat in my um, in my uh, sorry, um, I'm going to go ahead and open up the chat in my iPad so that you guys can um, can go ahead and. Huh. That's weird. Sorry, give me just a second, guys. I'm having trouble logging into um, logging into the uh, the drive. Okay, here we go. I got it. Um, so today we're going to be learning about eyewitness testimony. Um, and so the question that that's asked, uh, that we're going to ask as we're going through today's lesson is, can we trust human memory? Um, and so I'm going to ask you guys real quick in the chat, uh, do you think we can trust human memory? Um, is, is your memory perfect? Um, what do you think? Can we trust human memory? Melissa says no. Letty says no. Levon, no. Liliana, no. So we we don't. We don't think that we can trust it. Let's see. Daniel, Jocelyn say no. Joanna, no. Carlo says no. So we don't think we can trust human memory. So let's see what the experts say. Um, it says, uh, so there are two types of evidence. Uh, direct evidence, your eyewitness testimony that you saw Mr. Smith steal the diamond necklace, that is direct evidence. Um, your eyewitness testimony that you saw Mr. Smith go into the house and then he got came out with a diamond necklace uh, or when he came out with a diamond necklace, it was gone. That's circumstantial evidence. And we are not going to do the Google form. Um, so as we go through this, um, I want you to think like you are the jury on a theft case. The defense attorney provides three pieces of circumstantial evidence. So remember, circumstantial, um, you saw Mr. Smith going to the house and he came out and the necklace was gone. That's circumstantial. Um, and so the, the defense attorney is going to give you three pieces of circumstantial evidence that the suspect is innocent. The prosecuting attorney then brings up two eyewitnesses. Remember, eyewitnesses are direct evidence who point to the suspect and say they saw him commit the robbery. Which evidence is more reliable? Circumstantial evidence or direct evidence? Would you convict the suspect based on the eyewitness direct evidence or release him based on the circumstantial evidence? 
I want you to explain your reasoning in the chat. So in the chat, I want you to tell me um, which one you think. Anyone want to explain their reasoning? Would you convict the suspect based on the eyewitness direct evidence or release him based on the circumstantial evidence? I'm going to give you about two more minutes to put your answer in the chat. Okay, you've got about a minute left. All right, so time is up. Um, I didn't see anyone respond in the chat, so I wanna make sure that you guys are with me. Um, please remember that you are supposed to be um, answering. Awesome, thank you, Jocelyn. Direct evidence because there's a person that saw the crime. So Jocelyn says that she would be following the direct evidence um, and that's what she would use to make the decision. She believes direct evidence is more reliable. All right, so let's see. Um, forensic science, what we are studying forensic science is uh, deals only with circumstantial evidence. Um, it is the job, oops, it is the job of CSI and forensic technicians to analyze evidence found at crime scenes. Um, so that, uh, it is available for the police and everybody else. Uh, but is circumstantial evidence as important as direct eye contact eyewitness evidence? Uh, in the next few few slides, we're going to explore the re reliability of eyewitness evidence. Um, and it's going to teach us a little bit more about that. So uh, how observant are you? You're going to test your skills before you let before I, I let you watch the video, I'm going to tell you a secret. Um, so the secret is there are 21 changes of props and items in the room during the scene. 21 changes. See if you can spot 
the 21 changes. Okay, so I want to see in the chat how many of you saw changes in the video. Did you notice the 21 changes? I'll give you 30 more seconds. Uh, the bear, the hat, the thing on the floor, his hair color, and the night. It was glitchy. I could barely see the video. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the link to the video. Let me see if I can put the link to the video in the chat uh, so that if you didn't get it, you can watch it on your own. Uh, let's see. All right, it's in the video, The it's in the chat for you, Frida. So let's see the 21 changes in the video. So it's easy to miss something that you are not looking for. Um, and so there was a whole bunch of changes. I mean, it to even to the point where the maid herself uh, was changed. If you see, so they show one person at the beginning and then it goes on. Um, so it's easy to miss something that you're not looking for. And so, um, you know, on a busy road, that can be a dangerous thing. So this challenge is a bit more simple. This is an easier one. Um, and the challenge is how many passes do you count? So I'm going to play the video and I want you to tell me how many pass how many times they pass the basketball
Okay, how many passes did you count? Daniel Resendez, 15. Carlos, 13. 20. Melissa, like 20. Joanna, 18. Letty, 19. Jocelyn, 25. Okay. Ingrid, 19. Liliana, 18. Frida, 15. I'm going to give you about 10 more seconds to respond in just in case I missed somebody. All right. Did anyone see the gorilla in the video? Frida saw the gorilla. Anybody else see the gorilla? Yes. It got confusing when they all held, held in the middle. Yeah, Daniel didn't see the gorilla. Uh, it stopped in the middle of the video. Daniel didn't see it. Um, I was confused, but I think I did. So I'm going to go back to that slide. And how many? Let's finish this video. The correct answer is 15. There he is. He's walking in. He's thumping his chest. And he's walking out. So if Daniel was our witness, Daniel saw the exact same thing that Melissa saw, that Ingrid saw, uh, Frida was on the ball. If Frida was our witness and we said, okay, how many um, passes were made while the gorilla was there or, you know, during this thing with the gorilla, Frida saw 15. She was correct. Daniel didn't even see the gorilla. Studies show that nearly 50% of the people who see the video the first time do not notice the gorilla. They don't see the gorilla at all in the video um and so some of us missed it and that's okay right because um you know we uh we were not told to look for the gorilla but we need to be watching for things even if there is no gorilla um so let's try again let's try another another one can you follow the cup with the chocolate in it? Okay. Can you follow the cup with the chocolate in it?
Frida, I will go ahead and uh, send you the link again. Um, were you right? How many of you were right the first time when it was just the pink cups? All right, Leti was right, Melissa, Jocelyn, Saul, Liliana, okay, and Frida, Carlos, and Joanna did not get it right the first time. Um, what about the second time? How many of you were right the second time when they added in the yellow and the green cups? All right, Alondra, Liliana, Jocelyn, who else was right the second time? Okay, so the video was cut. I'm gonna go ahead and put the link to the video um, in the chat, just so that you guys can um, can watch it later if you want. Um, let's see. Just wanna make sure that I get the right one to you guys. And I'm going to drop that in the chat just in case anybody wants to watch it on their own. Um, so I'm going to keep playing this. Now, Carlos says he saw the duck. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Carlos saw a rubber duck. And so maybe you saw the duck the first time, that's cool. But did you see the fifth hand? There's five hands in that video. And if you saw the duck and the fifth hand, did you happen to notice that there were blue cups at the beginning but green cups at the end. Blue cups at the beginning, but green cups in the end. So that's pretty interesting, right? Um, it's pretty interesting because even when we're paying attention there's little things that change that we don't even realize. Exactly, Daniel. I'm totally with you. Um, there, there's things that change even when we think we're paying attention. Um, so now think about eyewitness testimony. When a detective asks a witness, did you notice anything on the night of the murder? How reliable is the witness's answer? How reliable is the witness's answer? So I'm going to give you four minutes. I really want you to think about this. And I want you to explain your thinking in the chat. So I'm going to give you four minutes. I'm setting a timer on my phone. And I want you to think about your answer. You know what? I'm going to make it five. Uh, I want you to think about that question and answer in the chat. How reliable, how reliable is the witness's answer? But explain your thinking, Melissa. I don't want just a, a quick one, one sentence. I want you to really explain your answer in the chat.
You've got about two minutes left. Okay, Daniel. I've got Daniel. I've got Jocelyn. I've got Daniel Resendez. So I want to remind you, how reliable is the witness answer? That's what you're looking at. How reliable is the witness answer? If we're just looking at what the witness says. Carlos, I got it. Thank you. Joanna, got it. All right, Carlos, I've got your answer. Okay, you've got about 10 seconds left to get your answers in. Uh, I am missing some of you. Levon, I'm missing. All right, so let's look at some of these answers that we've got here. Um, the answer is not reliable because the witness could easily make a mistake and forget an important detail, um, especially in situations where adrenaline is pumping. That's a great point, Daniel. Um, you guys were sitting calmly in your houses um, looking at the video and you missed things. So with adrenaline pumping, it might be even worse. Um, let's see, Frida, the witness would only see certain details in a situation, so it's not completely accurate. That is very true. Um, Levon, human brains can make things up when they're panicked. You know what, Levon? That's a great observation because... If you are interviewing a witness and you say, did you notice anything? You're kind of leading them on. It may be that they didn't notice anything. Or if you say, did you notice the gorilla? And they're like, oh man, I didn't notice the gorilla. Was there a gorilla? Is this a question that's trying to lead me on? Um, it's not really reliable because the witness uh, is going to see the obvious things. Um, so the detective is going to double check the video. What if there's no video? Um, so you've got to think about all of those things. All of those things come into play um, when you are, are trying to make those determinations. Um, so I'm going to play this clip. I'm going to play this clip for you. Um, and let's watch it. Let me pop it out. First, we got to skip this ad. There we go.
So I'm going to pause this real quick. He says big goofy glasses. Did anyone notice the big goofy glasses? You can't see the video. Okay, let me reshare it. Let me restart it. All right. Can you see it now? All right. Uh, Carlos, can you see it? Yes, Jocelyn, yes. Awesome. Okay, I'm getting some feedback that now you can see it. All right. Well, now you're looking for the things he mentioned. All right, let's see. So we, um, let me exit this. Here we go. Um, so we don't necessarily have the best, right, um, information. And let me make sure that I am sharing the presentation again. Here we go. Um, so does the information on the video clip surprise you? Are we surprised um, that eyewitness testimony gets so much weight and maybe it shouldn't? Are we surprised that there's so many mistakes um, and so many things that we don't see? What do you think, guys? Are you surprised by that?
yeah, I, I was kind of surprised when I first heard about it. Um, what are your feelings about the reliability of eyewitness testimony? You know, do you, what do you think? What do you feel, guys? What are y'all thinking? Um, only Leticia was surprised. Anybody else surprised by what they've learned? Yeah, I, I thank you, Daniel. I think it's uh, or Levon. Who was that? Whoever that was. Um, but yeah, it's really surprising because we we put so much value on on what people say they saw. Um, Frida, it's weird to realize that you thought you saw was nothing close. Yeah, it's so crazy because you know I saw it, Miss. I saw it. I saw her do it. I saw him do it. I saw this happen, um, and and we really maybe didn't even see what we saw. Um, and so it's it's this whole issue of reliability and and can we really trust what we are seeing? Um, and so that I think that's super, super interesting. Um, and so uh, we're going to watch this video until minute 350. Then we're going to pause. Um, and then this is this will be the last thing that we watch today. And then tomorrow we'll go ahead and, and finish up. So this is going to be our last bit for today.
And so tomorrow we will finish watching this video. Um, but the question stands, what happened here, right? Um, the case, you have, a, you have two eyewitnesses um, that pick this man out of a lineup. You have uh, not just two eyewitnesses, but the person who is being assaulted by him, the person who is in physical contact with this man says, yeah, it's him. And the DNA says, no, it's not. Um, so it's a very interesting case. We're going to finish watching this tomorrow. Uh, we'll learn more about it tomorrow. Um, but the type of evidence that you, that was used to convict him and we come to find to wrongly convict him is direct evidence. Um, direct evidence, it's, it's an eyewitness. Um, so we're going to talk about this tomorrow. We're going to finish this video tomorrow. Um, I'm going to remind you again to please make sure that you uh, do the attendance for today. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and include the link um, for the attendance in here. Um, and we will go ahead and finish talking about this tomorrow. Um, thank you guys so much for uh, being attentive for being in class today. And once you've done the check-in, uh, you are free to go. And we will see you tomorrow, folks. Bye. Bye, you too, guys. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye, Daniel.